Okay guys, so over the next three lectures, we're going to be filling in some business information. Now the main purpose of this is basically search engine optimization. So search engines like Google will know what your website is about. So we'll head on over into settings. And in this lecture, we'll just cover the first four, which fall under the general information. So first we'll go to business information. Here we're going to enter our, our legal business name. Now since this is, I'm just going to make this for my own personal um, company. So we'll fill in ABG Tech. Okay. Now the legal address, I'm just going to leave that out, but I'll put in the city and the state. So that's Toronto, Ontario, and that's in Canada. Now I won't put in my tax registration ID. I would suggest that you do. This just goes on your invoices so that people will know like who they're paying their taxes to. So contact number, I'll just put in a random one here. Okay, and then finally contact email. So I'll put in my email address here. Okay, so some templates actually show that on the website. Um, this one, I don't believe it does. But we can put that in ourselves. That's not a problem. So again, we just put this in here. That's for the map. Okay, perfect. And then finally, business hours. Now, you have a couple of options you can put here. These are basically the different types of format that you can actually use in here. So I'm just going to put open for all the days because I don't really have specific time. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and save. And then we're done. Now we'll go into regional. So this is basically um, where your actual office is. So I don't want to put the exact setting, but I will, sorry, I don't want to put the exact address, but I will put um, like roughly where I am. So first the language, I am Canadian. And then geography. So again, Canada. Um, there it is. Perfect. And the closest city is Toronto. And I'll leave it at Imperial. Okay, so next we'll take a look at permissions. Inside permissions, what you can basically do is give other people access to your account without actually giving your username and password. So for example, you can invite somebody to help you with a website. You just put in their name and their email address here, and you can give them specific permissions. So some people can only add blog posts or change the wording, but they can't change templates or um, like change your plan. And then another thing you can do, another thing you should do actually is add a basic author, especially if you're going to blog. So you would put in their name, their picture and their Google plus profile. This will show up on search engines as well. And then their bio. So first name, last name, their personal website and a little blurb about themselves and then where they are. You don't really have to fill in the location, but the other two I would definitely recommend. And then the last option you have here is to transfer ownership. So if you're a developer, you can create a website and then transfer ownership to whoever is actually going to own the website. But do keep in mind that you have to add that person as an administrator first. Okay. So the last option in this section is billing an account. There's five things we can pick here. So first is billing. Here you can cancel your trial. You can see when you've been online since and you can change your plan between the ones that are available. Underneath invoices, you can see a list of all your invoices per month that you paid to Squarespace. Now, these aren't the same invoices as when customers order through your site. These are only for your own account. Login history shows you all the different days that you've logged in. And you can delete your site by clicking here and then delete site. And then finally, we can switch. Right now, we have it set up as a website. We can also switch to commerce or a cover page.